Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. And greetings. Thank you so much for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. And today I have a very special guest who I personally have known for many years. Her name is Mary Ann Reedy Dittmeyer, and she's here today to share her experience in using natural health, which she has put into her own life since 1994. I find Marianne to be one of the most inspirational human beings I have ever met, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. She was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis at a very young age, and uh, by two or three years old, she was actually quite ill, and then she was treated with lots of strong and now we know extremely dangerous medications and countless therapies and 23 surgeries and hospitalizations. And this arthritis seriously affected her comfort, flexibility, daily living activities, and independence. And in addition, of course, pain, anger, and depression. But Marianne is college educated, married, works at many different very responsible positions, drives, and takes care of her own home and two cats. And if you saw her, you would be amazed, and perhaps you will. We'll have her come lecture in person because Mary Ann is quite disabled, but yet she will drive to my office and get out and get herself everywhere, as well as always be helping other people. And through natural medicine, she has found to, um, to be able to experience less pain, more flexibility, more energy, peace of mind, and actually a full life. So that's why I wanted to really allow her to share with you today. And she is an advocate for a healthcare system that integrates natural methods with standard medical therapies. So thank you so much for being our guest today, Marianne. Hi, Ellen. Thanks so much. And I want people to know if they're listening on Long Island, you know, we have listeners all over, like on iHeartRadio all over the country and the world, but many of our listeners are Long Island based, and you're a Long Island native. I definitely am. So, you know, your experience is something that, that happened right here. And we originally met, I don't even remember, when did we originally meet? It's way back um, I heard you on the radio in Stony Brook for years and years, and as I was looking to improve my lifestyles, I guess I went to lectures and went all over the place and probably through Earth Save Dinner or something like that. Yeah, and it's quite a number of years ago. Definitely. But what has allowed you to live, you know, we're not going to say you have a totally normal life. There's struggle involved, and I think you can share that with our listeners. Definitely. Um, I think growing up with an illness or disability, I was in special ed when I was a child. I didn't um, have standard activities, ride a bicycle, play Little League, those kind of things. And even the social uh, items, you know, to be with other people, um, sports, picnics, you know, canoeing, all those sorts of things limited. So I definitely felt different. I definitely look different because every joint from my jaw to my toes is limited by at least 70%. Um, but there is an attitude or a certain focus that my parents gave me, say, be like them, catch up with them, do what they do, those kind of things. They warned me, it's going to be tough, but you got to keep going because you're entitled to live your life the way you need. But being oh, so wait pain, a minute. So your parents encouraged you to have a self-perception about yourself, even though you are physically disabled, to my not let that stop you. 
Right. And my home ec teacher in seventh grade, we did sewing, we set the table, we cooked, we did all these things. And she called my mother that day and said, your daughter's telling all these stories about what they, what she does, like the other children. And my mother said she has to set the table, she has to sweep the floor, she has to make her bed, she has to dust on Saturdays. So my parents did have the same expectations with chores and activity as my siblings did. See, that is amazing. If people were to see you, and of course this is radio, so they can't, um, you could have definitely sort of been excused to just say, you know, can't do anything, sit in wheelchair, and that's it. I have friends who live that lifestyle, and some of them still with their parents or being, you know, full-time um, assistants, and that's what illness and disability can do to you, but I... Um, I always tell people I'm not going to sit on the couch and cry because there's so many things to do. Well, it is really inspiration in terms of how you have done that. Now, you did get lots and lots, like you're talking about 23 surgeries? Yes. That's huge. That's a lot, and that was to repair a crooked foot or knees or, you know, anything they tried to keep up with the illness and, and disability progressing to fix the joint but when you fix a joint on a crooked body sometimes it's not always successful um you know i just i use crutches i have adaptive shoes i have adaptive equipment in every room of my house on my desk in my car so that they help me to do what i need to do but the surgery was corrective and um uh and cut down the pain, i got to say, tremendously. If they have to fix a joint, that was good. But it didn't bring me from being disabled to not disabled. So that's where you're talking about the fact that integrating in, you know, modern medicine, such as appropriately used surgery, when nothing else worked, really could be helpful. But tell us about the pharmaceuticals that you were on and that most people in your situation are on. Um, I was misdiagnosed for a few years before my parents found out about juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, so they treated me for other things that I didn't have. But then when I was diagnosed, immediately gold shots and other very strong steroids, um, and they made me feel ill immediately, but they were convinced that that was the way to calm the immune system down. And then I had a lifetime of... uh, anti-inflammatories and painkillers and I look back now that I don't even know how I did what I did taking painkillers and those other drugs because I could barely focus if I'm on an Advil these days but um, to, to kill that pain a bit so that I could think and to be able to decrease some inflammation in some way because every time I move or roll over in bed it was incredibly painful. I want to remind you listeners that you're listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, and my guest today is Mary Ann Reedy Dittmeyer, um, somebody who shares Long Island with us and who has conquered in terms of her mental capability. She has a college degree. She's married and just has had a very full life while other people with disabilities will sometimes, you know, I would say kind of cop out of having the courage that Mary Ann has had. And I do want to remind you as we go through the discussion that she uses Bach flower remedies and we'll go a little bit into what those are. And she actually helps others through um, find your balance. So that's something else that's good to know. So, Mary, you were on all these pharmaceuticals, and they did give you pain relief, as you said. But what made you, what, what were some of the downsides that you had because of, let's say, methyltrexate and some of the other strong anti immune and uh, anti inflammatory drugs? My disability progressed anyway, so certainly they're relieving what they're trying to. They say our system is doing the best we can for you, but, you know, um, you're kind of buzzed out without knowing it when you're on medication. It calms the body down, the whole system of your body, not just the pain in the joints. Um, The pain medication definitely, maybe lethargy, maybe not being as mentally focused. I didn't realize that until I was off of everything. 
Um, then you have a schedule to take these pills, and sometimes they cause gastrointestinal problems, other times constipation. Um, eventually, perhaps sometimes medications aren't working, so you need another. So you wind up going to the doctor, getting a diagnosis, taking another medication, taking it for a while, having a side effect, going back to get another. It kind of is, um, it was important to me at the time. I followed the rules and lived my life anyway, but um, it wasn't, it didn't give me the quality of life that I have now. And so, you know, it was a big jump to um, think about trying to get off those meds because most people never do. In fact, it's like one med leads to another. And I would say most individuals I know who are in your shape, many of whom are living in nursing homes, are on a long list of medications because one leads to the next. Correct. Um, methotrexate put me in the hospital two times, and I kept telling them this is the new medication. It certainly gave me a charge. I could clean my whole house in the day when I was on the methotrexate, but I also was building up some side effects, and the two things turned out to be infections that I didn't know I had because this didn't allow you know, your body to respond in a way to let you know that you were ill. So that scared me, and I went to the emergency room and said, that's what's happening because your immune system is being so overshadowed by the methotrexate. But then I went back to my medical team, and he says, that doesn't happen. We're doing the best we can, you know, cutting down your inflammation. So they didn't see it. The emergency people told me that was it. And within the month's time, I, I didn't take it anymore. It scared me. But then you were left with the pain again. So Correct. what made you discover and try to see how using natural remedies could help you? I always had this interest, call it new age, call it philosophy, call it spirituality, you know, what makes people's lives be the way they were. But then in 1994, I was newly married, I was working full time. Now I had a house and a husband to take care of, and I had a future with him. How was I going to do this if I thought or the progress of my de disease was going to be cumulative and it's going to be um, progressive through my life? I'm not going to be able to hold this job. It was different than being home with my parents who were taking care of me at the time, but I was still an active adult woman with them, but I needed help, and it scared me if I kept going this way, what's going to happen? So I started some natural health techniques, and to my surprise, in three or four months, I was off of half of my medication, feeling wonderful, and in six months, I was off of all my medication that I had been taking for 37 years. So wait a minute, were, the, were your usual physicians okay with you stopping these drugs? I pointed that out. You know, the other big issue was that they wanted me then to put go on steroids so that would give me energy to live the life the way I want. And they say, you forget that you're disabled. You know, you forget. You're, you're too busy. But the steroids scared me because I knew that was really big, equal to methotrexate, that you're not going to take that for a long period of time without side effects that are threatening. So I began... Um, with a chiropractor and a nutritionist and an herbalist and counseling and colon therapy and massage, acupuncture, little by little through the months, picked something. I did it for three months. I went into debt with everybody, and I said, I promise I'm going to pay you back, but if I get benefit, I'll continue. If I don't get benefit, I'll move on to the next therapy. So I was going to my medical doctors, and they say, your blood work is better. You know what we're doing. We, we, we finally have it here. Everything is going well. And I said, okay. And then those three months later went definite improvement. And I said, well, that's because, and I wrote him a letter of, you know, all the things I had done. It was two pages long, and perhaps, you know, I could guide people or you can change some of your therapies because people can get well. And he said, I guess you don't need us anymore. Here's your bill. And right. that was so his if response. anything, that was threatening. <laughs> well, stand by. Marianne, because I want to tell our listeners as we go to a little break, you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Listen live online at nccradio.org or on iHeartRadio. For more information on today's guest or topic, send us an email at whpc at nccedu 
Stay tuned. Herbally Yours will be right back. Okay, so maybe you didn't finish or broke your New Year's resolution to get to the gym or start that project you had kept on the back burner since, well, okay, the dawn of time. I get it. That's okay. But you know, there's one thing you can do to get back that inspiration, that can-do spirit. Perhaps you or someone you know has a vehicle that they don't drive anymore. Why not consider donating it to the National Federation of the Blind? All you have to do is call 866-282-7327. That's 866-282-7327. You can also log online to nfb.org and click donate. And maybe you know someone that's blind. You can reach out to nfb at nfb.org. That's nfb at nfb.org. So what do you have to lose? You have everything to gain by helping someone in need, like your motivation. Oh, and a tax deduction. So why not get started today? And remember, charity is only a phone call away. And welcome back to more right here on... Herbally Yours, brought to you by Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My guest today is our local resident, inspirational icon, and her name is Mary Ann Reedy Dipmeyer. And she lives right here in Suffolk County, and we see each other often because she does come to me for nutritional support and herbal support and things like that, which she's constantly trying and incorporating new and varied things into her protocol. She's actually on no pharmaceuticals, which I will say, Marianne, is very unusual for someone with your level of disabilities. I think so. Now, when you talk to other people, let's say, who you meet who are in similar situations, um, are they, like, afraid to go off the meds? Is that what's going on with them? I am still ever frustrated with their choices. Um, I was... I was um, I was afraid myself to start the therapies. What if it doesn't work? What if they're ripping me off? You know, I've, I've been disabled my whole life. How can I possibly get better? It's just in my body. Um, and they double check with their doctor before acupuncture or massage and nutrition or taking an herb. And they double check with the doctor. And uh, many, many times, even still now, the response is often there's no proof that that works. So even though that's not true, if you go even though that is not true, and I'm walking yeah. around saying that, um, right. you know, there is that guidance that I think they're being misled, or they're we're still held to be suspicious about these items, even though there's tons of people using them being better. Look at all the health food stores that are popping up all over the place. That's a very good um, indication because of that, right? And yeah. not only that, it used to be, let's say, you go to a special health food store like Whole Foods. Now you go into any grocery store on Long Island, any one of them, the regular mainstream. They're loaded with organic choices. Why? Because Absolutely. people are finding out the truth and voting with their dollars. Absolutely. Now, oh, dollars, let's talk about dollars, because, of course, another thing that keeps people sort of locked into pharmaceutical medicine is that that's what's covered by health insurance. It's getting better because acupuncture and massage and certain therapies are being picked up by uh, many medical companies, but you only get between 5 and 20 visits. Um I was always motivated. I needed certain, like I said, adaptive equipment. Every day I need help to get through the day because I'm not 100% independent physically. So I always saved my money. I worked full-time in an office. I had my accounting degree, and then I had two home jobs. People brought me work, and I did the work at home. So I saved my money uh, because I needed to do that because my life was a bit expensive. And at that point, um, when I was being newly married and needed to, I needed to find out I was young, I could do it, and I used some of my savings for that. But I did talk to the practitioners. Most of them said we don't know what to expect because we hadn't worked on somebody with this degree of disability that's so young. I said, I'm going to do everything you say. 
little by little, and I'll pay you, and I will pay you back eventually in full. So I just, I just um, went into debt for each of the practitioners, and I did pay them back eventually. And the more motivation I got, um, because I was feeling better, I didn't have as many night sweats sleeping because arthritis makes you feel very hot. I was. Um, changing my diet little by little, which was shocking. What, what am I going to eat now? So the first thing I did was give up meatballs, and then I gave up meatloaf, and then I gave up steak, and those were like the staples of our meal, the meat, potatoes, vegetables. I was feeling better. It motivated me to continue going. They reassured me not to be worried, but take care of yourself, and in the end, it always worked out. There were some things that were secondary or tertiary care, in my opinion, that I didn't continue so I just manipulated the budget. I, you know, I don't buy a $200 handbag, and I don't drive a Mercedes, and, you know, I don't have five sets of curtains, you know, in every window. So there are ways to switch the way you spend your money to be able to invest it in myself. So I invested in myself for three months, and then I added three months, and as I felt better, some therapies were not necessary anymore. And um, I just saved money and kept on with those pr- practitioners who were helping me get to where I needed to go. And how long have you been married? It's quite a while. This is 29 years this year. Wow. Congratulations. Thank and you. And your husband is not a disabled person. No, and yet he's not you two disabled. do things like go on vacations and, you know, all kinds of sort of normal activities, get together with friends. Definitely. We have a church life. We have a social life. We have a, a, a garden in the backyard, which we enjoy every summer. When I first got healthy, I went to the Bahamas, but he didn't want to go to the Bahamas, so I went to my with my girlfriend on a uh, Bermuda, actually, on a cruise. I went on a hot air balloon ride. They, the doctors or practitioners told me, instead of acting successfully with a disability, learn to be a successful woman. Do things that women do, and the more exciting things you do, it's going to bounce up your immune system because it's going to stimulate your body. And we go um, to church conventions every three years, and so far... I think three times we've done a 5K race, which was part of the fundraising for our church. And I was in the wheelchair because it's 5K. Jeff pushed me in the wheelchair. I was his coach, and we do those kinds of things every now and then. Just inspirational. And I want you to know you're listening to Herbal Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse. And my guest today is our local Hero, Mary Ann Reedy Dittmeyer. Let's talk about Bach Flowers and how, how you help others. And also tell us how people can get in touch with you, Mary Ann, if maybe another disabled person needs some coaching. Definitely. I've been doing that since the year 2000. I was challenged. We didn't know what was going to happen with you. You have to tell the people how to get well. So I went to schooling to learn about the Bach flower remedies. They were established in England by Dr. Edward Bach to be able to bring the body back into balance and mind, body, spirit, which is the name of the company, Find Your Balance. And they are drops that we take either on our wrists, in our drinks, in our mouth. 38 different herbs that I can develop into a combination for you. One single dropper bottle will last a month or six weeks, and people take four drops four times a day to decrease stress, to increase confidence, to be able to uh, get rid of past history memories, to get rid of uh, fatigue, Uh, three different formulas for depression, those things that can distract the mind from strengthening the body and distract us from living our lives the best we can. I do phone consultations and mail the packages to folks these days, and my number is 516-639-7734. Well, that's a wonderful place to start because one thing that's great about the um, what you're talking about, Bach flower remedies, is they're made out of flowers, they're very gentle, and there's no worry, let's say someone was in your position on all those pharmaceuticals, they actually can be used safely along with conventional pharmaceuticals. There's no herb-drug interaction with them, which is sometimes why they're a great place to start. They are, and they were one of my first things that I used, and I would do my program a little differently, 
because they uh, really help you strengthen your mind and calm your mind and um, the mental and the emotional side of changing your lifestyle could be very well helped by this and then just to maintain my fatigue or decrease my worry and concerns or <clears throat> sense of being overwhelmed still whatever emotions I'm having this week or this month I said you know I tell my husband like I need another formula because <laughs> I got to get myself back into balance and they're very gentle and they are very um, easy to take and uh, changing your mind and and supporting your emotions are tremendously helpful in living a lifestyle to make yourself be the best you can be. So much so, because I always use Bach flower remedies, and I use them specifically with my children. By the way, my children are now 43 and 40, so we're talking about a while ago. But especially when they faced something that was challenging, like you're talking about. Let's say doing a school play comes to mind. And when my son was really nervous, he didn't want to go do it. So I made him a Bach flower remedy combination, and it just allows you to just move past your fears but it's not a drug correctly and that's what they say you mean to tell me i take these little drops every day and i feel like this i said yep that's what they do energy medicine vibrational medicine what we think and feel affects everything around us surrounding us it's in nature so balancing that energetically without any effort on the individual it's easy why not Well, I'm all for them, and I think it is a great place to start, and it probably helped you, you know, besides everything else, right? We're all cumulative, starting with your parents telling you it doesn't matter if you're disabled, just do what everybody else does, clean your room. Don't sit Mm -hmm. there in your wheelchair. That's amazing right there, instead of them going, oh, poor little Marianne, she can't do anything, which you could have copted to. Absolutely, and probably did manipulate that. Teenagers are teenagers, but um, it wasn't my personality, and they had those experiences. I have four siblings who were incredibly supportive, and, you know, they pushed me along, and my sister rode her bicycle and put the, a wagon in the back, put me in the wagon, and we went tooling around our neighborhood. <laughs> so they expected me to come along with them, too. And, you know, then you found Bach Flower Remedies. You You were willing to change your diet you were willing to you know slowly go off medications telling your doctors about it who don't sound like they were so supportive instead of being really excited that you got well they like dismissed you there was one doctor that for several years once a year he called me up to see how i was and what are you doing these days so he thought about me for a very long time and wanted to know what i was doing since then, I heard he has massage and acupuncture that he refers people to. But certainly, there's other therapies to use that are absolutely um, successful in helping people with chronic illness or disability. And even if you drink more water in your day, even if you have more double the vegetables in your day, if you start to exercise every other day, any little thing that you can do to give your body what it needs to jumpstart is going to work will create a difference so we're at the end of our show thank you so much for being our guest Marianne and thank you listeners for tuning in to Herbally Yours produced in the studios of 90.3 WHPC Nassau Community College in Garden City New York for further information email us at whpc at ncc.edu remember all our shows are archived so if you enjoyed Marianne you can tell your friends to listen in this is your host Ellen Kamai at naturalnurse.com inviting you to join us next week for another edition of Herbally Yours. Until then, stay healthy.